We get together with um, a bunch of parents all the time with my daughter because we arrange play days with the school and, you know, uh, this being the political climate that it is. Um, uh, I was just talking about one particular election in New York City back in the day when I lived there over 15 years ago where I was just so conflicted about the candidates for mayor that I just didn't vote. The guy goes to me, because Latinos are lazy. And I was like, I would have I took that. it well, I took it well. I was at the home of these people who I really cared about, whose daughter was a huge play, playmate of my, my child. And I was so taken aback, I was like, all uh, right, I'm just gonna go get some <laughs> lemonade for my kid. After that, I've had dialogue with myself, with this man in my head, oh. constantly. Especially what you would have said, what you're gonna yeah. say and next you're gonna time. Say, what you're gonna say next time, how you're gonna handle it and all that stuff. But I, I have extraordinary peace with the way that I handle it, or do I, because I continue to have the dialogue in my head. Right. You know but it's I mean? good, like, but, but also like, it's good that we're talking about it. Like, what are the options? What else can we do? Do we just like roll through it and kind of go, I don't think that's the case, but for so many reasons, you know, like, and then if that's the case, then, then let's know our facts. We're dealing with it a lot. And I just, there's just the experiences that happen are just too real, too bold to share because they're also being said by people that we love and we respect that just commit that act of, indiscretion and they allow themselves to be it's a little too relaxed or though no, it's straight up racism yeah but but they also they allow themselves to be so relaxed that their true self or how they were raised comes out but then you kind of go but i love you like our children play together and if if we're going to sustain this relationship for the sake of our children what do i want you to know about who i am and where people like me come from. It's kind of like you talk about what your truth is and your experiences and they choose whether or not they want to accept right. it. And at that point, if they want to keep on being ignorant, that's their choice. Well, exactly, you did, absolutely. At least you did yeah. what you did because I'm not going to take take on the whole reason why we, the stereotype and all that stuff we've gotten to the point where we are is because everybody takes on everybody else's frustrations and anger. At the end of the day, at some point you have to personalize it. <laughs> what about people that you've grown up with, that, that you have like a common culture with, you know, when it comes to like your heritage and, and, and who you are and whatnot. And all of a sudden they're hard on you because you're not angry, because you're not being super like in people's faces and caring like. You're so groovy. What happens when you're choosing the high road by just basically kind of like being vocal, being very, very, you know, uh, uh, correct about where you stand and what you believe in and never looking away and sort of like keeping eye contact and everything. But then you're scorned by somebody when they go, yo, you didn't stand up for yourself. And you kind of go, I kind of think I did. So what you were thinking that I should have just like gotten up like, yo, like, yeah, yeah. that's not how we spoke nice. at home. Part of my learning curve was, cause I, I've always been that feisty, that feisty human. My family knows it, my friends know it. Um, when you know somebody says something that I don't like, I will let you know. Uh, where I was wrong then, it was in my deliverance, you know. And then, kind of like in my in my thirties, when I just wasn't getting like the response that I wanted, and it's and it's because I was I was wrong, you know. To you get you, you know wrong negative. According to who is the question? And and then the thing is, is that like. To, Till present day, I, you know, I used to be one of those people that would say, you have a platform, use it wisely, talk, defend, you know, and I was that person because I wouldn't say I had a chip on my shoulder, but again, like certain things hurt me differently. Mm -hmm. And um, and my learning experience, it's more like, I still say what's on my mind when I feel discriminated against or when I hear something that I didn't like, um, but I've gotten a lot further and I've had more success by just, changing changing and, and I think that's something changing my tone but I think that even like for me I, I, I also grew up I started learning that if this is gonna be my forever then I need to grow up and just learn how to just grow. Just, yeah. just grow up but but I still say something I still fuck I'm, I'm, I'm that person that it's like oh, oh. Sicily. But that all depends. It yeah. all depends on how wrong you've been or what the circumstances are or how upset you are. Yeah. Sometimes you are really angry or really upset where you just, you know, it requires a blow up. It's kind of like the, 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 in that moment is the, the need to defend yourself. But I take it another, in another level in the sense that how do we teach our children to do it? Mm -hmm. What do we want them to do? 
What, what, what patterns? Because we, we've actually been exposed to X amount of things, and we've actually gone through our journey, and we know exactly what we've done and what mm -hmm. actually works and what doesn't work. How do you condense that? to tell your kids moving forward, this is how you're gonna react, this is how you're going yeah. to do it. Completely, yeah. Talk to us about your experience. Your With stereotypes. stereotypes. Yeah. My stereotypes, oh, they're so, I mean, you know, going into the public eye and, you know, having a disability, it's, there's so many stereotypes. Because for me, it was always like, I couldn't do anything. I was brought to this world and if you can't, if you're different, you're obviously like not normal, meaning you can't do nothing. So it was always a battle with me to like say, no, actually I can, and I will show you, and I will prove to you, and we'll have a conversation about this, and it'll be an educated, peaceful conversation, but I feel like it's very important that you should know that, you know, there's so many different people on this earth. Do you call it a disability, have, having MS? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny because <laughs> growing up, you know how a, com uh, a computer is disabled? Yeah. When there's no internet? So I would never call it, I'm disabled, I call it, I have a disability, because it doesn't define me, but it's something, like, something that I have, because you know? Watching you sitting here with us, you uh, obviously do more in your life than most people I'm related to. <laughs> do you realize that? I mean, just... So I impressive. live everything, I always try my best to, I don't want to prove to anyone that I could do anything, but I want to show you mm -hmm. that you can, Anybody can do whatever they want. They you want to prove to yourself. It. You want to show absolutely. Everybody. You know, every day I'm proving to myself that you I can do it. You travel the world. You go to yeah. fashion week. I absolutely. mean, we follow you on Instagram. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> and so, how does that quote unquote stereotype work for you and against you? I mean, it it works for me because I can show everyone that you know, no matter what you have, it could be minor. There's so many people who have invisible disabilities that you don't see it, but it's there. And I think it's very important that people know that, you know, there's so many different things, yet we're all, we can all help each other and break all those different stereotypes and say, you know, we're different and that's okay. It's okay, we're different, it's okay. you know? That's what it is, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. And so for me, I just, you know, I don't know, I just live. Well, to bring it back to the very first story you shared that, mm -hmm. that started this whole conversation, by you sharing this story with us, it kind of preps us. Mm -hmm. Be prepared. Yeah. You're gonna have those moments. Mm -hmm. Whether if it's for you to gonna go, I'm gonna move on and go get a fucking snack for my daughter because this is beneath me. Mm -hmm. Or just kind of going, that's not true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just, just stand up to that. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of like, I don't know, that's all I have and to And here's the stereotype. Yes. No. And the fact that we can get, we can actually have fun with them. And define them in a way. There's no definition though, you can talk about defy it. Them too. Defy, defy them too. Defy them. them. Say fuck them. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Look at Judy, Judy's like, fuck them. <laughs>